Hello and welcome to Kildalton College. My name is Martin Raftus and I'm here to talk to you today about the impact of increasing the EBI or the Economic Breeding Index of the Irish dairy herd on greenhouse gas emissions. The first figure I want to focus in on today is the greenhouse gas emissions from 2019 for Ireland in total. This is a sector by sector breakdown of emissions. We can see agriculture at 35% is a major contributor of the total greenhouse gas emissions. So agriculture will have a role to play in managing our emissions into the future. The second figure I want to look at is a breakdown of the agriculture greenhouse gas emissions into the specific gases that are produced. We can see the three main gases that are produced. In yellow, we have methane, CH4, which accounts for 64%. We have 31% nitrous oxide, in blue and we have 5% CO2 in brown. So we can clearly see that methane is the largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions in total. Methane is predominantly produced by bovine animals in their rumen, uh, belched out as essentially a byproduct of fermentation of fibre feed in the rumen. Science will continue to work and carry out research on ways of reducing the amount of methane that livestock are going to produce into the future and that may well be a part of our solution in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. At farm level dairy farmers have over the last 20 years used breeding as a means of breeding more efficient and more profitable cows. The tool that they've been using for this period is the economic breeding index or the EBI. What is EBI or economic breeding index? It is a profit index which allows Irish dairy farmers to breed cows to do two things. On the board we have deliver a higher milk solids yield, which is kilograms of fat and protein, ultimately what farmers have been paid on. So the more kilos of fat and protein produced, the more profitable the dairy cow is. And the second one is to improve dairy cow fertility. The better the fertility, the greater the longevity of a cow in a herd and less replacements are required. So ultimately, less livestock will be required and less methane potentially being produced. To go back to what a profit index means, it essentially means that each animal is attributed a monetary value, a euro value. This euro value indicates the profitability of that animal above the average animal. So the higher that EBI or monetary value or economic value is, the more profitable that cow is. So essentially we're focusing on more profitable cows, more efficient cows, cows that can produce more kilos of fat and protein. To illustrate that today, I have two cows um, from the Kildalton herd that we'll focus on in a minute. I have some figures here on the board that we will discuss or look at firstly. Two cows, 3098 and 3102. Uh, both have completed their second lactation last year. Both are freshly calved in the last number of weeks and are now third lactation animals. 3098 is a crossbred uh, Holstein Friesian Jersey. There's about a quarter Jersey in her. She's a characteristic crossbred type cow. A lot of that black colouring, the black head, the black body, the black feet, the black legs, even black in the other. So the other lady, 3102, is a Holstein Friesian, which is more of a black and white type animal. 3098, if we look at her figures, we look at the milk kilos that she produced last year in her full lactation, 7,684 kilograms of milk. 3102 produced almost 2,000 kilos less, 5,726. So a huge difference in milk volume between the two cows. In terms of fat and protein percentages, 3098 is, has significantly higher fat and protein percentages. The fat at 4.6 is almost 0.4 of a percent higher than 3102 at 4.2%. Protein also about 0.3 higher, 3.8 versus 3.5. And ultimately this leads on to the production or the, the kilos of milk solids that each cow produces. The farmer is paid ultimately on the kilograms of milk solids supplied to the co-op. 3098 supplied or produced 639 kilograms of milk solids, 
3102 produced 444. 444 is probably the average nationally, so it's still a, a, an excellent cow. It's just a 3098 is obviously an exceptional cow. The type of genetics and breeding that we're trying to attain more of. Um, ultimately, if you're looking at breeding replacement heifers from either of those cows, you would be very much focusing on breeding the next generation of stock from 3098. The EBI figures are there for each cow. 3098 is a more productive cow. She's a more efficient cow. She produces more kilos of milk solids and she has a higher EBI at 190 euros. 3102 has an EBI figure of 132 euros. EBI figures will change um, year on year as we get more data on the cow. So as a result of last year's production, 3098, her EBI will continue to rise. And if she repeats that year on year and stays in the herd and her fertility uh, is maintained, obviously that EBI will continue to increase. So I suppose ultimately the focus at farm level has to be to try and breed more efficient cows, uh, greater levels of production, obviously more profitable, but on an individual basis will produce less greenhouse gas emissions on a per cow or per unit of, of, of product produced essentially. Thank you.